Hello and welcome back to Football Scrutiny. Today we're going to be taking a look at the FA Cup tie between Arsenal and Leeds United. Mikel Arteta got one up over Marcelo Bielsa. Let's take a look at it in detail and see the tactics which both men employed. Starting with Arsenal, if we take a look at the back four, Socrates on the right, holding in the weeds in the middle and Kolosinak on the left. In midfield, Genduzi would play the pivot role with Ozil on the right and Chaka on the left. Up front, Pepe on the right wing, Nelson on the left and Lacazette in the middle leading the line. Taking a look at Leeds United, they line up with a 4-3-3 or 4-1-4-1. Douglas on the left, Berardi in the centre back next to White. Ailing on the right back position, Phillips holding that pivot in midfield. Alioski on the left, Gotts and Cliche in the middle, Harrison on the right and Bamford up front. So we start by Leeds United looking at the way they build up against the Arsenal pressing. During the game, Leeds United almost always built up with a 4 against 2 situation. The most common of which was trying to pull the Arsenal forwards, Ozil and Lacazette, to one side. Once this would happen, they would then switch the ball onto the opposite side to the fullback. Phillips would often come onto the, the strong side to further pull Lacazette and Ozil over onto that side before the switch came. Having pulled Ozil and Lacazette over to one side, Phillips would then move in to support the fullback who has now received the ball. And here now that we can see that once the ball is come over onto the right back, Erling. Phillips is now in prime position to be able to receive the ball inside. But when he receives the ball, we can also see that White is in a position to, to receive. So when the ball arrives at the fullback, Leeds look to create plenty of opportunities in that half space with White providing the pass. Phillips also coming in. Cliche on the inside also. And then Harrison, of course, would be providing options down the line. Of course, the preference would always be progression for Bielsa side. However, if this was unlikely, and the ball could just be switched back into White or Phillips. Phillips did really well connecting the play during the game. On this occasion, the ball came inside from the fullback into him. Please note the positioning of Gotts and Cliche, both lined just behind the line of the red Arsenal midfield line, trying to receive the ball in between those lines, and then able to progress, playing forward onto the opposite sides. Great positioning from the two midfielders, and a clear identity of the way that Marcelo Bielsa tries to play with his lead side. Okay, so here we can see the initial phase of the build-up with the ball at the goalkeeper. Phillips just hovering around in between the two centre-forwards, Lacazette and Ozil. That four against two was ever-present during the game. And they always looked to unbalance the Arsenal attackers. Primarily they did this by playing to one side, as we already explained, or through circulation or even a direct switch. So when the ball is switched across into that weak side of the pitch, you can see now that Phillips is moving into support. Cliche providing an opportunity further forward in that half space. And that diamond. So when the ball's with a fullback, always the pivot goes to support and one of the attacking midfielders tries to support in the half space. As we can see here that they're under pressure, Arsenal are pressing intensively onto the side. And this is the cue for these United players to come in support. They come in to support close, creating shorter passing connections with the ball carrier. Phillips would then be used to just bounce a pass into, and then they would be able to switch the play into a lower density area. When that press to the side is now broken, the centre back is allowed the freedom to receive the ball uncontested. Centre back will then drive into midfield, preventing, preventing Pepe from then being able to shift across and jump onto the fullback. Once the centre-back's progressed though, he can then reassess his options to see where he can play. So once he's dribbled into midfield, you can now see the staggered position of the centre-backs. Should he require to, he can just play it back into him. Phillips has obviously picked up a position behind the two centre-backs in front of the midfield, with Gotts and Cliche providing positions just in behind the midfielders from Arsenal. And Phillips providing that key in midfield has got three options if he was to receive the ball all of the Leeds United players would be capable of receiving the ball in between lines from Arsenal. It's clearly been worked on and clearly been practiced on the training ground from Marcelo Bielsa. Furthermore, the positioning from Gotts and from Cliche in the half spaces forced Pepe and Nelson just to hold their position inside to prevent passes coming into them, therefore allowing the fullbacks from Leeds United to be able to receive relatively uncontested 
and be able to play forward. With the fullback taking his first touch inside, Douglas then switches the play onto the opposite side due to the fact that they couldn't really progress down the side anymore. So as we can see, there's three players at the top of your screen, the fullback, winger and Cliche. Notice the position from Arsenal's defence. They've got a four and a two there. Notice how the left midfield and the left centre midfield were almost exactly the same position as the two strikers, Ozil and Lacazette. When the ball gets switched across, we can see there's a diamond over onto the right-hand side of the pitch forming. And Arsenal do really well to shift the cross when the ball arrives at the full-back. Already Nelson's going into press. Xhaka is moving in alongside Klich. Genduzi is blocking the pass in as well. So, and Mesut Ozil isn't being lazy and he's dropping back in with Phillips to prevent a pass coming into him as well. This is another example of that structure from Leeds United trying to play out from the back. Phillips trying to manipulate Ozil's positioning and moving him away in the direction of the ball where the ball's going to be switched across back onto the other side. So when the ball does get switched across onto the other side, Leeds are able to access that full back and we can see that space there due to the fact that Ozil hasn't shifted across quick enough. Phillips should be able to receive inside. Leeds on this occasion didn't see that and then they would then have to recirculate the ball. Another cue for playing out would when one of the strikers would go to press the centre back on the ball. Phillips would then move laterally either side of that forward to try and receive in space. This would then give Pepe the key to jump inside and try and prevent the progression from Leeds United. However, Leeds were clever on playing their centre midfielders really closely behind the lines from Arsenal to be able to receive and go forward. Leeds were intelligent enough to recognise when they should play short and when they should play long, skipping the Arsenal pressing and looking to play longer balls and receiving or trying to win positional advantage from a second ball. So when would they look to play long? When they're in the wide areas, they would look to play a ball vertically forward up the pitch. When they're in the half space, firstly they would look onto the opposite weak side to see if there are strong wide connections to be able to play. And when they were being pressed in the half space, they would also look to go forward vertically. And this is what they do in this example. Because they've got players further forward, they've got positional advantage to try and win that second ball. So when they win it, they can see now that they've got shorter connections in that space, in and around the Arsenal defence and midfield. And this is due to so many Arsenal players being used to, to press higher up the pitch. So of course, Genduzi and... So of course, Chaka is beaten and Genduzi gets sucked out of the centre. Pepe can't go in sufficiently to cover. And you can see that they're positioning there from the Leeds player moving into dangerous areas. And this just shows the versatility from Bielsa's side to play in different ways. And not just the short passing team. They can also play long balls up front and then win the second ball. And this was a good opportunity for them to get a strike on goal. Okay, so when we look at Leeds United's high block and Arsenal trying to play out from the back, here we can see Arsenal trying to play out with the two centre-backs inside the penalty area next to the goalkeeper. The three midfielders have a higher starting position and then they would then drop in to try and receive and play out. Leeds United implemented their usual intense man-orientated pressing. The only player who wasn't assigned one player specifically was Alioski. While Bamford immediately prevented access to David Luiz, Alioski was tasked with pressing holding as soon as he got the ball while putting Socrates in his cover shadow. Okay, so that was the cue for Alioski to press when the ball was passed into holding to jump out onto him and try and prevent the ball being passed into Socrates at the same time. Here's the match example. The ball's being passed into holding and this is the moment for Alioski to jump out and press him and try and prevent the ball from coming into holding. And by forcing the ball back into the goalkeeper, this then meant that Arsenal had to try and play long. Good tactics from Leeds United. As you can see here, the three midfielders from Arsenal being closely man-marked by Gott, Klich and Phillips. Intensive pressing early on from Leeds United. This is a little bit later on. It's virtually the same scenario. Alioski holding his position and waiting to see what the Arsenal goalkeeper would do, whether he would play it into holding, and if he does jump out and press him and try and prevent that ball from coming into Socrates. Bamford immediately onto David Luiz and preventing the ball coming into him and really providing the only option to play short into Horop Holding, who was weaker on the ball than David Luiz. So again, when the ball is played into Holding, 
He had no other option really, he felt, than to play backwards. This is one of the best man-to-man -man pressing that we've seen in quite a while. Leeds used it really well, really effectively, very aggressive, and on top of the Arsenal players as soon as the ball came in. Here again, Zuzi couldn't create enough space when he dropped to receive the ball in this occasion, having to be passed back to the goalkeeper again. And Leeds almost created an opportunity to score due to the high pressing and the inability of Arsenal to play out on this occasion. Looking now at the Arsenal attack against Leeds United's mid-block. Arsenal trying to play out from the mid-block was almost exactly the same as their initial phase. Leeds continued with that high man pressing, continuing to block Louise and forcing the ball into holding so that he would be the player to dictate the play. In the wide areas, the fullback straighted width, whilst the wingers played more slightly inside, so Pepe and Nelson coming inside into those half spaces. With the ball at holding's feet, Alioski didn't jump out to press him, but held his position and allowed Rob Holding to move forward with the ball. And so Bamford would then jump off Louise and go to press holding, and with the man-to-man -man marking in the centre of midfield, didn't really give many options but to pass the ball often vertically to Lacazette who was facing away from goal. And of course there would be deadly difficult to get the second ball as Leeds United was so intense in their pressing. When Arsenal did manage to get the ball into the midfield third under control, they had little success when trying to use possession as a tool. Against a heavily man-orientated side, teams can look to find the third man have a centre-back dribble into midfield, create two against one situations, or use rotations to create space. Arsenal struggled to find these concepts and apply them in the first half. Here we can see Ganduzi urging Louise to drive into midfield, but the situation is correct to do so. Ganduzi is too close to the space from Louise. It's all a little bit too compact. Arsenal perhaps then just needed to move away Ganduzi. If Ganduzi moves away and drags the midfielder away with him, this would allow Louise more space to drive forward and less pressure in doing so whilst driving into that middle of the pitch. On this occasion, Louise is able to find Lacazette, but Lacazette, as good as he is at holding the ball up, with Chaka and Ganduzi so deep, they're so far away from him that they can't move into support. The only support coming from wide areas and from Ozil, and Ozil, as you can see in this position, is too far backwards as well. No other option but to bring the ball back and then play the ball backwards towards his own defenders. Here's another image of that man-to-man -man pressing against Arsenal and preventing them from playing out. Arsenal needed to manipulate their tactics to overcome this man-marking system in midfield. Rob Holding tries to play into midfield but Leeds are so on top of him that they jump on, win the ball and create a counter-attack in the first six minutes of the match. You can see at the bottom of the screen, Socrates can't believe what he's seeing. Arms up in the air. Not a happy chappy. Now looking at the Leeds offensive transitions. Most of the transitions came from Arsenal trying to play the ball into centre midfield and then stealing the ball off them due to that man marking system. This is what happened in the previous clip. The ball was played in and it was just stolen straight off them and then a counter attack straight down the middle. On this occasion with Alioski out wide moving in, a simple pass either side of the two centre backs or even in between them for a darting run in behind would have left them one on one with the goalkeeper. So here's that example again where they've won the ball back in the centre of the field and a pass either side of the centre backs or even just a little ball in between the centre backs for the number nine to move on to. A three against two situation which could easily have led to a goal. Now looking at the Leeds United man orientated counter press. When Leeds lost possession in the middle of the pitch, just look at the shape of when the ball is lost. The connections between each other are fairly compact, allowing them to quickly react and press the ball to win it back. Six players there, in view, trying to win the ball back. And on this occasion they're able to make a challenge, high up the pitch and prevent Arsenal from counter-attacking. In the second half, Arsenal played more of a man-orientated press with wide pressing traps. Lacazette forcing the ball to one side whilst Ozil is preventing the ball from being switched through Phillips. Nelson positions himself slightly higher, preventing balls coming in from to the midfielder and also allowing him to get back if there is a pass into the wide fullback. When the ball is played wide, this is the cue to press. Nelson jumps in, fullback Kolosinak also jumps in and this pressing structure allowed them to have more cover in the middle of the pitch and made them more dangerous in transition due to the high nature of Lacazette 
and Ozil in higher positions. This image just shows Pepe driving into the box and we've got five Arsenal players there in and around the box and when the ball breaks out, look at the positioning from the other players, everyone's really high up the pitch, Socrates the fullback and Kolosinak the other fullback really high up the pitch, Chaka as well and there's also five ahead of them. That of course only leaves two centre backs at the back for cover, however winning the ball in these areas allows Arsenal to recirculate the ball. It was clear that in the half-time team talk, Arteta mentioned to his players that if there's a high man-orientated press and you can't play out, don't play into dangerous areas and don't get Rob Holding on the ball too often. Try and play the ball long and get runners in off the flick-ons from Lacazette. Here we can see Martinelli and Pepe moving into those positions to try and receive the ball. And then that man-orientated press from Arsenal to try and win the second ball. But I have to point out though that all the Leeds players the goal side of the Arsenal man, whereas when it was on the opposite side, Leeds United players were winning the second balls. But in this position, it's really difficult for Arsenal to win the second balls. Taking a look at the goal analysis from Arsenal, Arsenal recover possession and recognise that the lack of structure due to their team's shape with a high density of Leeds United players. Therefore, they had no other choice really but to play the ball long, where Nicolas Pepe controls it and brings it down. With the Leeds United structure stretched, Pepe is able to control the ball and drive forward. The mentality of Arsenal helped improve drastically during the halves. Here we've got players driving forward, beating their opponents into the penalty area. And we've got a four against three situation with two players arriving late into the box. And when the ball comes across, Nelson was able to get on the end of the defected cross and make it 1-0 early in the second half, which was in the end... Enough for the win and enough to get into the next round of the cup.